welcome friends you are watching this video because you want to know about plant breeding and I also want to know about plant breeding myself because I'm not a plant breeder but I want to talk about the basics of plant breeding that we know of and the molecular mechanisms and the molecular biological approach that helps us to do better plant breeding in the future so let's look at those things so in this video I'm going to talk about the difference between two different types of plant breeding okay one is the conventional mode of plant breeding which is the pedigree based another one is known as the marker assisted selection which uses molecular markers uh, to help breeders to breed plants so which is better and what let you decide but uh, let's talk about them in, a, in an overview fashion the plant breeding is uh, the thing which is one of the very essential and important thing for for human life to support and survive because uh, plant breeding is necessary to produce superior quality foods for us right there are different plants if you talk about any any major source major food source like plants like corn for example if you take corn uh, you say corn or rice or whatever type of plants you choose uh, let's say rice for example rice have different species different types of rice they have different uh, types of grains different types of dip types of nutrient values and stuff and also these are some stuff that we think of as a food value but there are also some other stuff for the plant purpose like uh, how how many time the plant requires to grow and mature and produce the rice and also how much its tolerance against drought how much its tolerance against insects and all the stuff so all those things matters right because not only uh, once you're eating rice in it in the table you're looking at the size of the grain and how the grain tastes but there are also many things called on field properties of the rice that is also very important let's say there is a beautiful rice with beautiful long grains beautiful scent you all like to taste that rice but that rice grows uh, after a long time it takes a long long time or duration to grow and also uh, it's not very much uh, insect tolerant so insects start to damage that rice in different aspects so if those things happens uh, the rice cannot grow and we cannot take that rice as a as a good source of food for us we want uh, because as the demand of food is rising day by day we want to produce better quality food food means the major type of food like rice corn these are the major sources of food wheat so the major sources of food we need to produce a long uh, a lot of these major sources of food in many high concentrations, many high amount and also I need to produce very very fast. So keeping these two things in our mind, we need to produce it fast, we need to produce better quality food, we need to produce a food that can afford uh, all this kind of kind of insect resistant and herbivore resistance and stuff, drought resistance, drought tolerant. So we want to produce all, we want to get a plant that carries all of these positive properties. Now earlier what happens? If we begin with the scenario, there are there are different plants. Let's say uh, four different plants. If we if we choose, now in one plant, this plant uh, has a long grain. Okay, but it will take more time to grow. It has a uh, moderate drought tolerance. Let's take three different properties: the size of the grain, the time it will take to grow, and also the drought tolerant property. Now in the plant 2, this is the plant 1. In the plant 2, for example, we have, uh, we have a moderate grain. Uh, we have, uh, it takes less time to grow and it has a high drought tolerant activity. We have another plant where we have uh, the long grain and we have less, both of them less drought tolerant and less time to grow. And we have another uh, plant let's say we have a uh, very short grain grain but it takes very less time to grow and very drought tolerant okay so these are the four different plant species let's say we are talking about if you look at this plant species they have different properties among them some of them are very good at the grains and their shape and the taste some of them are very good in the on-field properties like drought tolerance and like insect tolerance or uh, the time it will take to grow. So you take this is a very good choice but it takes more time to grow. This is a very good choice but in this case it is very less drought tolerant. So if drought happens these plants will grow and die. So we have these properties. So what we want among these different properties we want this long grain, 
we want very less drought tolerance, uh, very less uh, time to grow, and we was very high drought tolerance. So we find these properties in these two plants, plant number one, plant number four. So among these four plants, what will you do? We simply select these two plants and you breed the plants. Now, if we breed those plants, the plant, the offspring that we are going to get, these are the parental generation, P1, P2, P2 for example, parental generation. And then what the, the, the product, the progeny will get is the F1 progeny. Now, the plant that we are going to get here, this is a hybrid plant, right, of the F1 generation. This is the parental generation, right? So the plant we get in the F1 generation will contain and carry long grain, very less time to grow, very much drought tolerant activity. So this plant found to be very, very good, right? So this type of plants we generally don't find in the nature, okay? They have, all of them have some important features to us, some features may not excite us. So what we want, we want our selected features and we want to produce plants that carry all the positive features that we require. That is the purpose of plant breeding. Okay, And this is one way that we can breed plants by looking at their properties. Okay, By looking at their properties from outside. Now if you are in the field, you can check for the properties. Right? This is for the grains, this is for, for let us say rice. But for any other cases, you can other many more properties are there. Properties like, like say, uh, the quality of the food. Properties like insect tolerance, herbicide tolerance. All these things matters to us because we need to add herbicides. We need to add all the stuff. We need to add insecticides. So we need to look for all the tolerance properties, and we select the positive one, and we try to make everything in inside one particular plant that we can grow. And if we can grow it, we get advantage from all the sides, right? Now, this type of plant breeding is known as conventional plant breeding, or it's also known as pedigree associated plant breeding. What we do in this case, we simply cross between two specific uh, type of plants with better idea, and we get a third plant. And the third type of plant that we get, this is the F1 generation plant, and we have back cross of this plant with some of the parental type. Then we are going to get the F2 generation. Then we take that nine F2 generation. We again check for our properties, the visual properties, right? Visual properties means phenotypic properties, right? That we can see. So after we take is F1, we do a back cross with a parental generation. We get F2, and among F2, we again select things by the phenotypic properties, and take that one and do again cross with the F1 progeny which will be again another back, back cross and we are going to get the F3. This is the way we want to repeat the scenarios again and again, ultimately to get the best quality plant of our desire. That's known as the conventional or traditional plant breeding. Now there is another sort of plant breeding that we now follow. It's known as marker assisted selection. And we use QTL to do marker assisted selection. QTL is known as quantitative trait loci. Now what are these terms? I will have a separate video on marker assisted selection and QTL uh, to make you understand in more details. But the idea is different. In this case the idea is genotypic. In this case the idea is phenotypic. That means what we are looking, we are selecting. Right? But remember looking is not always good. We cannot tell everything by looking at a plant. Right? But if we can see a genetic or, or genetics of the plant or the genotype of the plant completely, if the genome of the plant is completely open to us and we know which gene is responsible for what, if it's sequenced properly and we know the function, we can do miracles. What kind of miracles we are talking about? We can exactly find out what are the properties of different plants, right? And we can mark those genes based on their genotype, genotype right? Once we mark those genes, we can easily select plants that we cannot select by our eye only, right? As we are looking at the genetic makeup of the plant, it's very easy for us to interpret what is going to be the outcome of, of the breeding of two plants and that helps us to select the proper plants for the, for the plant breeding. So what we do here, we do the same thing, we do the same kind of stuff, multiple plant species are there, okay? And what we do, we want to introduce a specific property. And the property, for example, is present in this and this one. So we'll try to do a breeding here and we get a new. 
this is the f1 and this f1 what we do across with any of the parent type the parent type is let's say this one right let's say this is x or let's say this is y do the parent type cross this is the parental and then we get f2 progeny this is known as a back cross remember back crossing because we are crossing with the parent type and again we get f2 back cross it with one of them should be this one f1 this is again another back cross back cross 2 we get another f3 progeny this is the way we will move the same way in this case but same way in that case but the difference is how we select the properties in this case we are selecting it by looking at their phenotype in this case we are selecting by looking at the genotype now the idea in this marker assisted selection is that finding a specific markers markers are nothing but gene sequences that are found in the plant genome okay once the repetition of those those nucleotide stretch of sequences now we know that if this repeat sequence is present in the plant in five time repeats or five tandem repeats that means that plant should be should be drought tolerant and very much drought tolerant so we know that by looking at the marker so once we know whatever plant species we we take out the plant species that we want to choose we we uh, take out the dna we run run the dna in the gel do the do the dna and we find a band or pattern of the dna's and by looking at the band pattern we can find the presence of the marker pretty easily and we want to figure out the marker and the, and for for a mixture of gels or the dna segment that we have we have different markers and we know these are the marker these are the two marker that is important this is this is the band which is showing us the property of the drought tolerant so we find this plant and this plant important for our selection to the next level so we take them we figure out which plants they were and we take them and do the cross same thing we keep on doing uh, to finally achieve the best quality of plant that we want that is the idea of plant breeding using marker assisted selection that's why it's known as marker assisted selection because the gene markers are helping us to ultimately choose the type of plant we require for the breeding okay that's why they're known as marker assisted selection okay so that's uh, the difference between the conventional marker assisted selection and that's the overview of plant breeding now but in this case of marker assisted selection they require much more complications much more expertise you require molecular biologists to work phd scholars to work in that field uh, to make it better while in this breeding is a traditional type a uh, plant breeder without knowing the molecular biology or any source of biology science can easily pull that off so that's the major difference and that's a huge difference it's re it requires a lot of investment and stuff expensive process but once you develop the plant it's very easy to easy to continue with that it's very easy to preserve that because in marker assisted selection also we are not doing any kind of uh, we're not talking about any kind of transgenic here we are not shifting or deleting or adding any kind of dna or genetic stuff there we are only only using molecular biology to select plants for better plant selection because it was found out that only looking at their uh, their features from outside is not enough because you know the same things we used to do with morphological classification just looking at the shapes and structures we used to classify things but we no longer do that because we know two things might look alike but they have a difference in the genetics also so that's why we figure out genetics is much more reliable way to look at and figure out which plants we will take for the breeding that's all about uh, the plant breeding uh, the overview i hope you know what is plant breeding now what are these terms now but if you not need to know more details about marker assisted selection and qtl uh, you should watch my next videos of this series of plant breeding so thank you for watching hit the like button if you want to subscribe please hit the subscribe button here to get more and more video updates to your email id thank you